All right, everyone knows what's going on in Paris right now. Uh, the uh, terrible siege, the whole country, the whole world to totally fixated on what, what, what happened in a satirical uh, magazine's offices and also a Jewish kosher supermarket. Uh, the targets being free speech and um, also the Jewish people. And this is a picture of what is coming to America, what will soon be here. You know, uh, I have a book uh, which I've been trying to read. It's called uh, Debt Free Living by Larry Burkett. Well, I want to tell you how to have some debt free living. Because Paul said, I am a debtor to all men. Uh, when, you, when you open the, the, uh, the, the Basurus Hagela and, and you, you see how he begins his presentation of the, of the good news, he tells you that he's in debt. Now, America is in debt. Right now, we are, we are drowning in debt. You know, if you think that your $10,000 worth of credit card debt will not get you in trouble, when the bank comes to foreclose on your house and uh, put you down in the homeless shelter, you will realize that debt is bad. And, and um, you are to be a debtor to no man with, except for a debt of love. But Rob Shul says, I'm a, I'm a debtor to every man. I owe every man something. And if I don't pay it, woe to me, woe to me. Necessity is laid upon me. I must, I must do this. Uh, and it doesn't matter whether they speak Greek or they don't speak Greek, whether they're highly intelligent uh, with a PhD or whether they're unintelligent or maybe even uneducated doesn't matter. He's, he's indebted to everyone. And, and, and that's how he starts his, his message. And, and I have to speak to you today about the uh, perils of uh, a lukewarm evangelicalism. Because, uh, you see, when, when, you're, when you're working at the, uh, on Wall Street, and you walk by a, 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 a square where uh, right there on the street you have a JW preacher, you have a radical Islamic cleric preacher, you've got uh, uh, all these uh, preachers. It's like Speaker's Corner in Hyde Park in London. And they're all uh, stirring people up. If you say, well, you know, uh, in the Messianic Jewish movement, uh, I'm a rabbi, uh, I have a PhD. Uh, I'm a. I have a, a great office. Uh, I, I'm a cleric, uh, but I don't dirty my hands with street preaching. No, no, I don't dirty my hands with street preaching, because I, I'm a right, proper parson, and I'm very concerned about my titles and my power, and my parsonage and all of my perks and all the things that I'm getting, my pay package and all of this. But when it comes to street preaching, I will not dirty my hands. Well, friend, I, I, got, I got some real bad news for you. Because you, you are going to find that uh, France is a preview of the United States. Yes. France is a preview. Can, can anybody say amen? amen. Friend, friend, let me tell you something. Uh, almost 10% of the population of France is, mu is Muslim, and it is growing. And those radical uh, uh, Muslim clerics are preaching. And, and those French citizens with their French passport are going to Syria. They're going to Yemen. They're getting training with their, their guns, their bombs, their rifles, their, their automatic weapons. And they're coming back in the country with all that training. They're going through passport control. They're going to Paris, and guess what they're doing, friend? And guess what they'll be doing here? Guess what they're already doing? What do you, th what do you think 9-11 was, friend? Wake up! Wake up! The, the, this lukewarm evangelicalism that, that, uh, that uh, our Messianic uh, uh, Jewish uh, friends are involved in. 
It's bad news, friend. It's bad news. Uh, I, I have to talk to you a little bit about the Talmud, about the Orthodox Jewish Bible, and, and about uh, what the Lord has shown me. <clears throat> First of all, there's something called a heksher, a kosher approval. Now, in that supermarket, all the products had kosher approval. It was a kosher supermarket in Paris. Uh, and that means rabbinical product certification. And that means it had to conform to the requirements of halakha. Of halakha. Uh, and that means that, that um, uh, when someone looks at a, uh, uh, something like this, the Orthodox Jewish Breed of Shah, they may say, well, uh, you know, I'm not ready really to give uh, any kind of hexer to something like this. This is really not kosher. And then when they open it up and they see this, uh, this little thing here, uh, which is really set at um, uh, when people are sitting shiva, but it's been changed a little bit. Instead of saying, may, may God uh, comfort uh, the, the mourners uh, of, of Zion and Jerusalem, it, it talks about the believers uh, in the Mashiach, and, and, and may, may they have the comfort. And, you know, the, the, the problem with... Uh, People who look at that and, and judge it and set it aside is they're not realizing that this is the real problem. Listen, friend, you have, you have to have a teshuvah. You have to have a total turnaround. Uh, they, it's called hit apek. It means turn around. Look, look at when, when they went through the Red Sea. The the, the sea was turned into dry land. That's a picture of you. The old man has to be turned into a new man with a lev hadash aruach hadashah. We're talking about hit root. We're talking about waking up, having an awakening, waking up. And then, uh, uh, what does Yeshua say? Don't just blunder out there and start doing your, your uh, preaching. But wait and get the mikvah in the Ruach HaKodesh. Not just the mikvah mine, which you've had, but the mikvah in the Ruach HaKodesh so that, so that with power, uh, you'll be able to do this. Now, what, what, do what? Sit in a Messianic synagogue as the PhD rabbi, uh, you know, the dead presiding over the dead, presiding over a dead work, letting the work die. No, friend, if you go to Beth Shalom, you will find there some Jews, but you will also find there some Muslims. If we don't evangelize these people, friend, we're going to be looking down the barrel of a gun. Can I hear an amen? Amen. And, and what I'm trying to tell you is you are indebted to preach to them. Amen. You have a debt to all men. Every single one. That means the terrorists. Listen, Ananias didn't really want to... Uh, go to uh, Shaul of Tarsus. Ananias said, look, Lord, he's a terrorist. He's terrorized our people. I, I, really, don't, I really don't want to go to him. I mean, I could get hurt. This could be dangerous. And, and, and what happens? The Lord says, you go to him. You go to this Osama bin Laden, and I'll deal with him. I, I'll show him he's got blinders on his eyes. And I'll show him that he needs to turn. That he's lawless. That even though he, he loves the law, he's lawless. The Pharisees are lawless according to the Bible. And, and, and this is so important for you to see, friend. You've got to see what, why uh, I'm a street preacher. Why have all these books been written by a, a street preacher? Everything you need to grow in Messianic Synagogue. It's not only in Espanol now, but it's also, uh, there's a version for the Hasidim. And, uh, and you know what? We have to reach these two groups, yes. the, uh, the Muslims especially and the, the Hasidim. Now, someone might go uh, Google uh, the new creation book for Muslims, and they might say, now, Gobel has really gone off the deep end here because uh, what is he doing with these, uh, these Muslims? But what did Paul do with, on the island of Crete? He said, look, one of their prophets, not our prophet, their prophet says such and so. This lines up with the Word of God. Okay, start there. Let that be your bridge and preach that. And so 
If it says in the Quran, if Allah wills, he can make you a new creation, then start there and say, yes, you have to become a new creation Muslim. You've got to submit to God as a new creation. And you've got to preach to these people. You've got to preach to every creature, friend. You're indebted. Necessity is laid upon you. Woe to you. Woe to you. Woe to you, Mr. Dr. Rabbi in the Messianic Synagogue. If you don't get out there and start preaching on the street. Yes, God's been waiting for you for 40 years to get out there. And you haven't done it yet. When are you going to do it? And friend, I want to tell you something. It's extremely important right now to realize that these are the last days and that that Jonah was told, hey, listen, Jonah, I know you don't like those people. I know uh, m many lukewarm evangelicals don't like the Muslims. Some think they're all terrorists. We had a lady come down to the basement of Beth Shalom. She was looking at this little tiny Muslim child. She said, ah, oh, get me out of here, a terrorist. <laughs> listen, don't be foolish. Realize that these people have to be evangelized. And Jonah, I want to tell you something now. If you don't open your mouth and spit out the gospel, then God is going to have something come and swallow you and spit you out. Because that's exactly what happened to Jonah. He didn't like those Ninevites. He didn't like them. He wasn't going to preach to them. He was running from God. God wanted him to do it. He said, look at them. They don't know their left hand from their right hand. Have mercy on them. Don't, you're having all this compassion all over nature. And, and this, little, uh, this little tree you were sitting under that drooped and, and all this stuff. Why don't you have a little compassion for these people? Don't you realize, friend, Moshiach died for every creature. Every creature. Necessity is laid upon you. Woe to you, Jonah, if you don't preach. Woe to you if you don't preach. So friend, I want to tell you, I believe that we've got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We've got, uh, I, I really wish you would Google Jewish evangelism, especially the video Googles, and watch the video on Jewish evangelism that I did, which talks about being drunk in the Holy Spirit and being completely bold and unafraid. Uh, and, and, and I use the example of suppose it's uh, Shavuos, and uh, Mashiach was just, uh, uh, he's just been risen from the dead. And, and now you're supposed to preach in downtown Pyongyang. And it, it's going to mean in North Korea, instant torture, instant death, instant, uh, uh, you know, you talk about me going to Burrow Park and how scary that was. Imagine how scary it would be in downtown Pyongyang in North Korea. But you know what? If you were roaring drunk in the Holy Spirit with, with, with the power of God, you could do anything. And, and, and that's, that's why the lukewarm evangelicalism that has creeped into Messianic Judaism is bad news. Listen, friend, the devil is very content for you to sit there in that little Messianic synagogue and do your little rituals because he knows that the vast majority of the ultra-Orthodox Jews wouldn't be caught dead coming in there. But what he's afraid of is that you might actually go to New Square and preach in the open air. And uh, yeah, there'll be a riot. Yeah, somebody will try, try to beat you up or, or worse. But you know what? Woe to you, woe to me if we don't preach the gospel. Why am I Johnny Appleseed driving in there throwing, throwing these Bibles all over the place, these Yiddish Bibles? You know, in some of these places, there's only one entrance, one way in and one way out. And they can close the gates at any time. And there's Shomrim watching for any foreigners, any, uh, you know, in the Talmud, uh, Mashiach is called that man. We used to have a lady here from Trinidad. She didn't like her husband too much. She was always saying, Datman, 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 Datman. Well, in the, in the Talmud, this is how they refer to Yeshua, Oto Haish, that man. And you know what? They don't like him. And you know what? The Jewish people and the Muslims who don't know who he is have got to hear it. 
And how can they hear it without a gospel? And how can they have a gospel without a darshan, without a magid, without a preacher? And, and, and so, friend, I'm telling you that if you want to live debt free, if you want to have a clean conscience, you've got to do what Paul did. He said to the Romans, he said, you know, I, I have a debt. And, and I, I, you know, it, and then he said to the Corinthians, if I preach the gospel, I can't really boast because necessity is laid upon me. That you see right now in their uh, somnambulism or whatever the word is, sleepwalking, these Messianic Jews think, oh, you know, necessity is not laid upon me to go out into the highways and byways and to compel them to come in. I could just put on my talit and, and uh, play rabbi right here in this little protected sanctuary. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Shabbos services. And I'm not, I'm not saying that you shouldn't uh, act like a rabbi. But what I'm trying to tell you is necessity is laid upon you for all people, including the Muslims. And to the Jew, I entered into his world. Yes, I learned Yiddish. Uh, and I learned about the Hasidim and I tried to present the good news that in ways that he could understand it. But to the, to the Muslim, I had to become like him and enter, enter into his world and preach the good news to him. And this is how to have debt free living to get their blood off your hands. Friend, let me tell you something. If you don't preach them, they will die in their unbelief. But God will hold you. A, listen, uh, if you are sitting out there and you've got all these unsaved relatives and you just want peace at any cost and you're really not preaching to them and you're really not making it clear. Oh, they don't want to hear it. You don't understand. I've tried that. And you're, and you're sort of just sitting there in that no man's land where you have peace, but there is no peace. You're making a mistake. You need to get their blood off your hands. Can I hear an amen? amen? You need to get their blood off of your hands. You have a debt to them. You weren't saved to sit in a, a congregation and play congregation. You were saved to be a witness. And may God help us all in Yeshua's name. Amen.